G'day and welcome to another big edition of the Footy Show. Looking ahead to round one, part two. My name is Yenny. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. And a few big games this weekend. Uh, they're certainly going to close, wrap up round one very nicely. It is. We had a brilliant start to the season. I think there'll be a couple more close matches this weekend to come. So, pretty exciting round of footy. Absolutely. We'll turn our attention to uh, the first big game over at Arnold's Creek. We've got uh, Melton Central's playing host to Rock Bank. Um, this is going to be a good test for both sides because uh, we saw a really good round one game between them last year at this venue. Um, all feeling around this game is we could get another another cracker. That's what I'm, I'm expecting a cracker. You go, these two sides, they're probably in a pretty similar position. They've sort of stuck with the playing group they've got. They've added two or three players here or there. But it's about building for the future for these guys. So it's to continuing on from what they've done last season. So I don't think either of these sides will win the finals mix. But these are the matches these sides want to win to build confidence and build um, these groups playing groups going forward. I like the Central's form of the off-season. They've had some pretty impressive performances and ability to just finish games really strongly. I think that's going to play into their hands very nicely uh, heading into this game. I think they're probably slightly ahead and they were slightly ahead last season. So I'll tip Central's going into this game, but I think it will be a pretty close one. I'll tip Central's as well. As we uh, we cross over to uh, to the big game between Broadford and Wallen, which will be broadcast on OKRFM. Going to be a magnificent broadcast. If you're down in the region, uh, going to be a big game here for the Pies because they're pretty season has just been incredible. They've, uh, I think they've been playing games virtually every weekend, including this past weekend in the practice match uh, uh, vicinity. Um, they're looking pretty good. It is. It, they've taken that approach. I know some clubs have only played one practice match where others have gone out and played several. It's, a, it's about gelling for this side. Last year they had a lot of new players in. They've got a lot more players in this season. So practice matches give this opportunity to see which players are going to be in the best 22 early on and how, they, how well they play together. They certainly know that the Pies will have been hurting after missing finals last year. Uh, just speaking to Dan Nolan uh, in recent times, just finishing, uh, heading into the final round in fourth position and finishing in uh, in seventh. No doubt that would have hurt. hurt. Uh, but he's rest assured he is as good as retired as anyone can be. So that's, uh, but it's, the club's got a lot of good forward options. It does, and look, I'm expecting them to have a big win. Mm. I think they had big wins against Broadford last year, and I can't see that changing at all. Yeah, Broadford. They're, they're, the fact that they're together, they've actually got three sides on the park, which is fantastic for them. And they've still got a lot of young kids in there that, uh, that no doubt will be sending a few waves through the, uh, the football world. And they've got Skip Bray back in, in charge. and he Probably took, one of the best coaches in the region. And he took them to a couple of preliminary finals. So you've got an experienced coach back in the helm who's had success at that club. So, look, I think they're going to be a step up from what they were last season. They may surprise a few teams, but it'll be interesting to see how they go once they're on the park. Yeah, I think it's tough for them that they are facing a team against Wild and who have got so much redemption. I mean, well, I guess we're, we're almost talking about the uh, being an Essendon fans like we are. It's like the 1999 prelim, going down to Carlton by a point, and then you come come out and take the, every game into the following year like it's a grand final. If they had been playing anyone else, I reckon, I don't think it, it, that... that, that, that Broadford would probably be a bit more a chance to be a bit more competitive, but I just see Wallen just coming out and making a statement. Yeah, I'm expecting them to have a point to prove this year. We all had them playing finals last year. I think they probably would have expected to play finals last year with the squad they've got. They just missed out in the end, so I think they'll be seeking to go better this year. Saturday night football, it's Romby, Romsey versus Diggers Rest. Um, I think we're both sort of uh, we're on different sides of the fence in this one. Um, your thoughts? I think Diggers will get up. And look, it'll be a good match. Both sides have kept most of their players from last year. Diggers have probably added a little bit more class to their side. So I think that could be the key. You've got the likes of Matthew Metcraft, Cole Laurie's come back, Jesse Flannery. These guys will add to the midfield depth. And I know Metcraft can play forward as well. I think on his day, he's the best player in this competition. So if you've got him on the field and he's firing early, that's a big key for them. With how close it is, don't know. It depends on the weather. We've, we we generally found if it was a bit wet that Romsey had a bit more success. And we are playing at Romsey as yeah, well. So yeah. that's the other thing. Romsey has a lot of success at their home ground and knocked off Diggers last year at their home ground early in the season. So it'll be a pretty interesting match. Yeah, I, I think Romsey, while they might just fall short, I think they're really going to give them a really good push. And I think this will be, uh, be the closest game of the weekend that will go right down to the early part, late parts of the uh, the final term. I just love their pre-season preparation. Got that really good list from last year. And Corey O'Sullivan, uh, if he's he's definitely one of the most underrated coaches in the competition. Uh, it, just coming up from under 16s level and taking a senior football last year the way he has as a coach, I think it's remarkable. And you only get better from your first year as a senior coach. And look, I think they will get better, and not just Corey as a coach, but as a side. They've, they've stuck together for t- this playing group, has been together for basically 12 months already. So they've got a really, really good starting point, and they're only going to build from there. They've got a lot of young players on this list, plus a lot of premiership players. So that's a really good mix that they've got going on. 
Sensational. Well, before we wrap things up, uh, I will we'll put some news out there. I had a lot of people asking about it on, on the weekend uh, on the radio front. Um, the Highlands FM have confirmed they are out of the race of broadcasting football this year, and that's purely due to lack of volunteers, uh, which is which is a bit of a shame. So that ends a, a, a long stint there. So a lot of more than a dozen people actually asked a question over over the past week, and I have confirmed this. So yeah, unfortunately, Highlands FM are out of the running of broadcasting games in 2018, which is a shame, but it encourages. It's a bit of a sign. Um, like everyone, everyone needs sort of volunteers to keep things going and uh, hopefully uh, they can be back next year. But of course, okay, I'm, okay our FM are fired up so that if, when you're down at Tarot Broadford Wall and you've got some quality radio there. Tara, thanks so much for joining us this week. I look forward to catching up with you uh, to look back on the round one that was. Thanks for having me.